Welcome back. Let's talk about Seattle, Washington, because there's 737,000 people that live there, and it could be important to them, and it could be important to you as well. So thank you for joining me, and let's jump in. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I like to cover the areas outside of Seattle, but today we're going to do a deep dive into Seattle. Uh, so you have a general idea of what's going on inside the real estate market uh, in general, and I'm going to do... Uh, I just want to thank you for joining me. So Seattle is located obviously in the North Puget Sound area inside of Washington. Uh, and it's connected by um, I-5 all the way from the, which runs north to south. And I-5 goes from Blaine, Washington uh, and the Canadian border down to San Diego and Tijuana. If you need to get to Tijuana, you could get there in 26 hours. I might know this for a specific reason and I won't disclose why. Also, there is uh, I-90, I which runs east to west, and it goes all the way out to Chicago. And 520 connects it to the east side, uh, which is uh, specifically uh, where uh, Redmond, Kirkland, uh, Bellevue area as well. But like I said, Seattle, Washington is our biggest driver, and I want to give you an idea what it looks like. Uh, it goes all the way from the Northeast 145th Street uh, all the way down into um, the Tukwila border. So let's jump in. Lumen Field is right here. I'm going to be there tomorrow. Hopefully the Seattle Seahawks do a little bit better uh, than they have been. And uh, yeah, so let's jump into Seattle. So like I said, there's 737,000 people that live there. And household units, there's about 368,000 household units inside of Washington, inside of Seattle. Uh, that means that there's roughly two people in every single household. Uh, bachelor degrees are higher. Uh, there's roughly 70% of the people have a bachelor degree or higher inside of Seattle. And the medium household income is $120,000 a year. And this is medium, not uh, average. So if you add it up, everybody's if you lined up everybody's income from left to right, highest to lowest, the exact middle is considered the medium, and that's 120,000 uh, roughly. Also, employment is roughly 72%, and a lot of the people that live in Seattle either work in the east side, or they work in some sort of service industry, or they are in tech uh, specifically. So I wanna give you an idea of what we were actually looking at here. Now let's jump into the actual numbers because it took me a while to do all this. Uh, there's roughly 7,000 lines of data uh, that I went through today. And I wanted to give you an idea of what it would look like if you came to me and you said, hey, I wanna buy a house inside of Seattle. And I'd be like, hey, I got you, boo. I already did all the work for you and I did all the math. But right now there is, as of yesterday when I did all these, uh, when I did all the numbers, there's 2,061 homes on the market available for purchase um, as of yesterday afternoon. The average cost per square foot is $642 a square foot, and it was roughly uh, $1,105,000. It's been on the market for 81 days. It's two and a half beds, uh, two bath, and it was just under 1,700 square feet. Now that 642 is really important because we're gonna get into that right now because that's what's available on the market right now. Uh, if we're gonna compare that to just, I'm just gonna skip ahead real quick for you, but if we're gonna compare that to what actually sold on a price per square foot over the last uh, month of October, what actually sold inside of Washington, inside of Seattle was um, $569 a square foot. So it's about 15% less than what was actually listed. So this is very important when you actually look at the numbers so you have an idea of what is a good value or not. Now, speaking of establishing a baseline, uh, we're gonna establish a baseline right now. We're gonna compare the average home sold in the last five years in the month of October from 2020 to 2024. And it's going to be, the average house is going to be three beds, two bath, and 1777 square feet. Now I went through and I added up all the numbers and that's what I came out with as the average home that's been sold for the last five years inside of October. Now, inside of October 2020, we sold 1,291 homes inside of Seattle, Washington. This is important because this is during, uh, this is during the COVID episode. And this is when uh, obviously interest rates are a little bit lower 
And on top of that, we were having work from home and we're doing um, stay at home orders and such. And this is right about the time uh, that everyone decided that we're going to move from their smaller house to their bigger house. So five years ago, 2020, uh, we came out with uh, 1,291 homes that were sold and the average day on market for a home was 2377. Now in October of 2021, there was 1,236 homes that were sold and that was about a 4% decrease from that. Uh, but the homes were actually sold at a little bit faster pace and it was a 19, uh, 19 days, 19 and a half days to actually sell a house. Now, what we didn't get to right now is in October 2020, the average home that was 1770, uh, 1,777 square feet, that's three beds and two baths, that home on average was $872,000. That was in 2020 of October. In 2021, October, uh, it actually went up 16% and the average home was actually $1,014,000. So it was an increase of about $142,000. Now, in 2022, in October 2022, we sold 714 homes inside of uh, October. And then the days on market came to 27.5. And this is right when the interest rates started to change. So you can start see a sizable decrease in the, in, in the actual volume of homes being sold. Uh, we sold roughly 500 um, homes less, which came out to 43% less homes were actually completed in sale. I got into the real estate market in October, in uh, July of 2021. So I saw 2021 fury uh, into 2022 stop to 2023, kind of hold steady. And now what we had in 2024. In July of 2023, we had uh, 662 homes were actually sold and the days on market were 33 days on market. So you have an idea that the increase is going up in days on market. And on top of that, the cost actually stayed about the same. It was 1 million in 2020 and in 2023, it was $1,007,000. So barely an increase inside that timeline. Now, this last month, October 2024, uh, what we had for homes sold, we actually had an increase in homes sold to 853. And on top of that, the days on market went up one whole day and it went to uh, 34.8 days on market on average. Now, the cost actually barely changed. It was $1,010,000 was the average house. And again, that average house is three bedrooms, two bath, and 1770 square feet. Now, when I look at the numbers and such, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for some people, but I went through and I actually looked back at some of the numbers from a couple of years ago. And in, I'm going to compare King County inside of 2023. And inside of King County of October 23, we only had in all of King County, 1,566 homes on market last year in October. That was in all of King County, and that includes the east side, the west side, you know, all Seattle in general, uh, and that's a very large area. And as I said, inside of Seattle this year, and they haven't released the numbers yet for 2024, October, but inside of Seattle, like I said, we have on the market right now over 2,000 homes on the market. So I was trying to figure out why we had a increase in closed sales this year when we've been having a, a sizable slowdown inside the market. And it's also because, like I said, we have a lot of homes on the market right now inside of Seattle, Washington. Uh, that's 12, uh, that's 2,061. Uh, when all of King County last year, like I just said, was under 1600. So what we're seeing right now is we're seeing uh, days on market increase to 81 days on market. And that's just what there's available right now and new inventory is coming onto the market uh, every day. So what's this mean? 
uh, for you as an investor or as someone that's buying or someone that's selling or just somebody that's renting, I'm gonna break that down for you right now because it's kind of important to know exactly where you fit uh, in general, so let's run into it. So tw if you're going to buy this house for 17, uh, this 1,777 square foot house that's three beds and two baths, and again, just think about it in general, it's not a it's a single family house just in general um, if you're going to buy this versus renting it I'm going to give you some of the numbers right now so if you're going to rent it it's going to be about forty eight hundred dollars inside of Seattle to rent this now if you're going to buy it it's going to be right about six thousand dollars a month so about twelve hundred dollars more that's twenty five percent more to buy it versus rent it and that's not including your HOAs, your special assessments, your insurance, or even uh, taking into account any kind of taxes. That's just your principal and your interest payment alone is gonna be $6,000 a month. Now, again, when I got into the medium household income, the medium household income inside of Seattle is 120,000. Now, let's go into a mortgage calculator for that, but with 120,000, let's do it right now, all you can qualify if you have very little debt and let's say you really luck out and you get today's interest rate of oh six point eight seven you're only going to have a purchase budget of roughly four thousand fifty uh four hundred and fifty thousand and this is just if you're bringing sixty thousand dollars down and this is the medium household income inside seattle this is half of what's available currently on the market so this is why we're seeing a slowdown. It's because everything that's on the market right now is above the average. So, you know, there's less people available to buy it. Now, on the renter side, you're saving a little bit of money renting right now, but at the same time, you're not building any kind of equity. So that's very important. I'm gonna do a future video on amortization, but I currently, I have a current video right now on amortization and what it's break down, and it's gonna be right here. So it's important to keep this in mind when you're actually buying a home, you are paying interest ahead of time inside your mortgage payment. Now, if you're gonna be a seller right now and you're coming onto the market, you're gonna be competing with all these other homes that are currently on the market inside of Seattle. Like I said, there's 2,061. If you're gonna be putting your home on the market for roughly 15% more than what's actually being sold for, you're not gonna get that. And it's 81 days on market. So that means you're gonna be waiting around for almost three months before you find a home, that uh, you find a contract that's going to actually close and not only is it acceptable, but it's gonna close. And this is the biggest thing that we're run into because right now about 16 to 20 percent of contracts fail just for financing alone that's not even including um, if you're doing an inspection or anything like that so this kind of stuff is very important when you actually are buying or selling home to actually keep in mind because if you're pricing 15 percent above the market right now you're not going to make it so when you're doing your comps or you're working with a real estate agent like me you can actually go through and make sure that you get the best value for your home um, also, the reason why I do this is because I want to give you an idea of what's actually on the market, what's available, and at the same time, you know, what's actually going to be a proper expectation, uh, either for you to buy or you to sell or you to make future plans. If you have questions like this, you can get a hold of me right here. And as always, I'd love to work with you. And it was a pleasure working with you today. And I hope you have a fantastic day.